Hi, I'm Amanda, and this is What the Funk. So on my machine, I've gone ahead and created a brand new smart contract using DAP tools. And it's created two files for me, a contract file, I've called it symbolic, and a test file with no tests in it because I've removed all the uh, default tests. So basically we're going to create a goofy little contract here that does a few things. And I've already written up a few test cases. So given a function called myFunk, uh, that takes a uint argument with the name of num. If num is equal to 1337, we want it to revert. If num is greater than 10,000, we want it to return the number 10,000. And if num is less than 10,000 and not equal to 1337, we just want to return num. So you can see over here, I've got my funk. It really doesn't do anything but return 1337. So if I go ahead and create a first test, um, we're going to do some test-driven development, which means basically we write our tests first and then get our contract to pass those tests as we build our tests. So I'm going to write my first test. So here we've got our first test. In DAP tools, if you prefix your test with test fail, that means the test will actually be marked as passed if uh, the um, test you've written actually reverts or fails in some way. So in this case, we want our function call to revert if we pass 1337. So let's go ahead and save this file. Let's run dev test. And we can see that our test itself is failing because we didn't actually revert or fail in our function. So let's go ahead and try and fix that. So when you're doing test-driven development, the key is to write the bare minimum amount of code to make your tests actually pass. So you don't end up writing too much code or over-engineering things. You just want your tests to pass and you want the correct outcomes. So in this case, um, just to make this first test pass, all I'm doing is checking to see if number is one through three, seven, and we want this to revert. So let's go ahead and save this file and make sure our test passes. Let's run dab test again. And sure enough, our test passes. So the next test we want to check to make sure that the number 10,000 is returned if we pass a number greater than 10,000. So let's write a test for that. So here's our next test. And if you prefix your test with just the word test in dab tools, that means you actually want this test to pass. Uh, so here we want to make sure that the result we get from calling my funk with the number 10,001 uh, will result in the number 10,000 being returned. So let's go ahead and save this test, run it, and we should expect it to fail because we haven't actually added that uh, logic into our contract. Let's run dab test. And sure enough, it fails. So let's go ahead and fix that. Again, I'm just gonna write the minimal amount of code to make this test pass. And some of you are probably gonna see a problem almost immediately after I write this. Now here, all we're doing is checking to see if the number is 10,001, and then we're going to return the number 10,000. This will actually make our test pass, but you probably see the problem with this, and you um, will be able to tell right away that this is not the correct way to be coding this function. Uh, nobody actually codes like this, but I'm doing this to kind of illustrate a point, which will lead us into uh, a tool we can use in DAP tools called symbolic testing, which will help us uh, not to actually code like this, but to code more correctly. So I'm gonna save this and then run the test and see what happens. So sure enough, that test passes. And uh, let's go ahead and write our third test. So in this final test, we're basically testing to see if a number that's less than 10,000 and not equal to one through three, seven will return that very same number. So let's pass the number three and check that we actually get uh, three as the result. Of course, this is going to fail because right now our function is returning one, three, three, seven, but let's just run the test anyway, just for illustrative purposes. There we go, it fails just as expected. So let's go ahead and fix that. 
Once again, you can see I'm coding like a crazy person, but this will make our test pass. So let's go ahead, ahead and save it and run our test. And sure enough, all of our tests pass. Obviously, you're not going to code like this, but I'm just trying to illustrate that if you're coding something a little bit more complex, you might start coding yourself into a position where you're not taking into account every single variation of your function call is being tested. So in order to account for this, we're going to use an advanced feature of DAP tools called symbolic testing. So here we have our symbolic test. To create a symbolic test using DAP tools, you just prefix your test with the word prove and then name it whatever you like, and then pass in any number of arguments that you want DAP tools to plug in randomly. And this basically generates a handful of tests for free. You don't have to write them by hand and it runs them against your contract. You can actually poke holes in your contract and basically test for any number of cases and make sure uh, you're basically covering all of your bases. So in this test, uh, we know we only have one revert case. So I don't want to, I don't really care about the number 1337. Uh, App Tools happens to plug this in. I just want to return, um, but we do want to test everything else. So basically I'm going to test that all of our uh, rules um, are being met uh, in this test, no matter what number is actually being passed. So if we go ahead and run this test, let's see what happens. So as you can see, this test failed. And the great thing about DAP tools is that it actually gives you a bunch of counter examples that you can uh, run against your function to kind of check to see uh, whether or not your contract is behaving, behaving like it should. So in this case, it's saying that if it passes the number 10,004, it's gonna fail. If it passes the number 1536, it's also going to fail. Um, we could add a bunch of if statements to our contract and make these counter examples pass. But instead, let's go ahead and make our contract uh, coded in a more correct manner. So this test actually passes in any case. So this function is now more concise, more correct, and it should handle every single case we throw at it. So if the number is equal to 1337, we revert like we should. If it's greater than 10,000, we return 10,000. And the only other options left is to return our original argument, and that should uh, satisfy the last test case. So let's go ahead and run our test again, and everything should pass just fine. Let's do a dev test. There you have it, everything works. And that's it, that's how you can run some more advanced test scenarios using DAP tools and Sibog testing. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.